guys, my name is Katherine, and today I'm going to show you 10 things that you need to know as a beginner programmer. So you're a beginner programmer. You just started coding, maybe you're taking your first computer science class, or you've been in your computer science classes for a while, but you haven't had your first like professional internship yet. This is for you. The first thing that you need to know is you need to Google everything. Everything that you do not know, Google it. Everything that you want to learn how to do, you're going to be Googling it. You're going to be Googling how to create a string, how to access something within a string, how to sort a string, how to do all of these different things. And Google's basically going to be your best friend. You're going to be Googling everything, you're going to be learning lots, and you're probably going to be copying and pasting a lot of things from Google into your code editor or into the IDE you used to code. And since you're Googling everything, tip two is to be patient. You're going to need to be patient with yourself as well as others. You'll, you will be getting tons of errors. Like, matter of fact, like without a doubt, when you're starting to learn how to code, you're going to have errors in your code. And there's nothing you can really do to prevent that. It's just the process of learning, it's the process of creating your programs, and that's totally fine. When you get an error, you Google it. That's, that's it, you get the error, you Google it, and you're gonna need to be patient with yourself and figuring out that process and getting used to literally Googling everything. It's like one big giant research project and that research project is you learning to code and it requires Google. You know, just be thankful you have Google, like that's good. But of course there are going to be errors that you may not be able to figure out through Google. Maybe you've Googled things for 30 minutes for an hour and you still can't figure it out. That's when it might be time to ask somebody a question. If you have spent a considerable amount, in your opinion, a considerable amount of time on it, you might need to ask someone else. Of course, when you're asking this other person, you are going to need to be patient as well. The other person isn't just going to come in and solve your code immediately. It's going to take time. The other person has to understand your problem, has to understand what you're trying to do with your code. They have to understand a lot of things. They have to understand what you've done with your code already to make this error. It takes time and that's okay. So you need to be patient with them too. It took you a long time to get to this error and it's taking you a long time to solve this error. So obviously it's gonna take a long time for this other person to get onboarded onto your program and what you are trying to do. You have to be patient. You have to be able to take a step back and be like, okay, it might take 15 minutes for this person to figure out my code, what I'm doing, and help me figure out a solution. Like, that is totally fine. They're not gonna be able, it's not like two plus two equals four. It's a lot harder than that. Of course, when you're beginning in the really early stages, it might be easier for someone to help you out in a quicker time frame. but as you go into the higher classes, it's not gonna be a simple two second solution. It's gonna take a long time for them to understand what you're trying to do. And the solution might even take more time to build out. They might just give you a suggestion that then you have to go and figure out exactly how to make that suggestion work. They might give you a tip and you have to go and write the code to implement that tip. It's not just, oh, you forgot a semicolon, even though that's a total valid error and you might've forgotten a semicolon, it's like, ah, forgot that, oh well. Uh, that's totally fine too, but some errors do take longer to solve than others. They're not all going to be super quick to solve, so it's important to be aware of that. Tip three is change your attitude about errors. Errors aren't things that are meant to stop you. They are meant to help you find your solution. They are helpful tips in figuring out, okay, this is where my program is going wrong. It's worse if your program isn't working and you don't know about it. An error is going to tell you your program isn't working. So imagine like releasing something to billions of people, millions of people, thousands of people, whatever, and it doesn't work and you don't know why. That's a way worse situation than your code not working in front of you. If it's not working in front of you, you can figure out what's wrong. If you can't replicate this error, then you don't, your program's not working and you don't know what's wrong. So that's bad. That's like way, way worse. So this, this error is really telling you, okay, hey, this logic isn't working. 
all right, what do we do now? We Google the error. We try to find the solution. It's a hint to what's going on wrong in our program. It's not this thing that's being annoying and not working and then you just want to like throw your computer. You have to be patient. You have to be patient with your errors or else you're never going to get a working program. Tip four. I kind of already said this, but this tip is about asking others for help. You never want to learn how to code alone. The whole stereotype of some person sitting in the corner learning to code and they become this hacker and now they own, you know, they know a bunch of stuff and they have this huge company, like, okay, that happened once or twice, but it doesn't, it's not the norm. I promise it's not the norm. You, the worst thing you can do is try to learn to code alone. If you don't have a support system around you, it's going to be really difficult because you're not going to have one, anyone to motivate you, two, anyone to like get suggestions off of or get if you to ask questions to, to build a discussion with, and you also won't be able to solve their errors. Half the battle is not only you solving your problems, but helping other people solve their problems. You'll learn so much by having both ways of communication, if that makes sense. So you really need to ask for help and other people need to ask you for help. Both of those need to happen in order for you to become the best programmer you can be. All right, tip five. This might seem a little strange, but as a beginner, do a project. Do a simple project. This might be something that you're assigned in class, like in your 101 or 102 or 200 level class, but make a project. Make something with your code. Don't just input a little line of code that makes the whole thing work and everybody else wrote the other like shell of it. Write a program from scratch. That's going to be key for you to become a programmer and a developer. Now, what project should you make? Well, there's a lot of different options. You're gonna wanna make something that has clearly defined rules. Clear inputs, clear outputs, clear side effects, clear logic in general. You don't wanna be worried about the rules and the logic of the game or whatever you're trying to build starting out. You wanna be worried about the actual implementation of the code. You don't wanna be worried about, okay, in this game, we're going to have this player move two steps forward and then to the right if this thing happens. But if this thing happens, we want them to do this. Like coming up with all those rules, yes, that's a creative exercise and you can do it. But when you just want to focus on the programming aspects, pick a game like Tic-Tac-Toe, Hangman, Battleship, something that already exists. And then you already have rules to kind of follow and you can build your own implementation off of that. So you can create tic-tac-toe in code. You can create hangman in code. Everyone knows how it works. Then you can test it out. Play it yourself or have somebody else play it. You actually built something with your code. And I think you'll be surprised at how motivating it is to have for you to have something that you built from scratch. You built tic-tac-toe from scratch. You didn't just take someone else's code of tic-tac-toe and input like two little things into it. You came up with your own implementation in code. Tip six, this kind of goes along with the project tip, but if you don't know what to code, you don't know what to write for your code, you don't even know where to start to make your code do what you want it to do, just write something. Start off with something. It's just like writing. You don't want to get writer's block or coder's block. You just have to keep writing. You have to keep coding and eventually something will work. Now, of course, like later on, you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to have like more planning aspects. You're not going to just want to write all this code in this database. And now you have this company with a million of millions of lines of code because everyone's just been coding. But when you're starting out and you're just trying to figure out how things work, write any line of code. You can always go back and delete it later or change it. Write something. Because then, even if you don't build what you wanted to build, you're practicing, right? And in the end, you'll have something. Tip seven. This, again, with, you know, in order to build that project, in order to be able to write that one line of code when you get stuck, you have to have a strong foundation. Without a strong foundation, you're not going to be able to do anything. You need to focus on the foundations. You don't want to try and attack this big, like, complicated thing right on the get-go at least when you're coding. You might be able to do that with other disciplines, but computer science is something that really builds on itself and you have to take it step by step. Just like for math, you can't do calculus before you know one plus one. Like you need to know your addition before you go into calculus land. You're not gonna be able to switch those things around. And computer science is the exact same way.
the reason why your foundation is so important is because the technology that we're using today is not the technology we're going to be using in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years but they are all going to be built on the same foundation so if you understand that foundation you can kind of branch off into all these different paths of computer science like cybersecurity, front end, back end, machine learning. There are all these uh, graphics, there are all these disciplines you can kind of bounce off to and new disciplines that are being created every single day, just yeah, every single year and you just kind of jump VR, AR, like all of these things, they're built on that same foundation. And if you don't get the foundation, you're not gonna be able to jump off into any of these areas. All right, tip eight. This one's pretty quick, but duplicating code is wrong. This means if you have two things in your code that are doing the exact same thing, and it's in two separate areas of your code, they do the exact same thing, they have the similar operations, and they're supposed to have the same operations, like you are averaging and summing up numbers over here and you're doing the exact same thing over here and the right you know over here you're doing some adding and summation over here you're doing some adding and summation you combine them you create one function or one method that brings them together so that way each instance can just call your center method and do the exact same thing that they're both supposed to do if you have duplicate code meaning one, meaning more than three lines of code, I'm just gonna say more than two to three lines of code that are the exact same lines, but with maybe different numbers in between, then put it in a function. It will make your life so much easier later on. It's a good practice for a beginner programmer, as well as an advanced programmer too. All right, tip nine. This kind of goes with debugging that we were talking about earlier, but you don't wanna just assume because your code's working, that everything is good in the world. Just because your code happens to be working for this one type of input in this one instance doesn't mean your code works all of the time. Just because you got those two test cases to work doesn't mean your code is 100% perfect, that you can't improve it, that you can't add something to it, that you're not considering every edge case or every possible input that could come in there. You wanna make sure that you're adding lots of test cases and that you're really testing all of the possible inputs that could go into this function. Another way to look at this is if you're, if you're making an iPhone app and your app looks amazing on the new iPhone X. Well, newsflash, I don't have an iPhone X and neither does a lot of the world. I have an iPhone 7 and when I go and I try to view the app you've created, then maybe it doesn't look the same. Maybe it doesn't look good. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe the buttons are not aligned correctly so I can't get access to certain things. That's an example of what it could assume, you could assume, ah, oh, it works on my phone. It's gonna work on everyone's phone. No, it doesn't work on my phone. And you don't want an angry customer. All right, the last tip, take breaks. Breaks are so, so important. You, when you're starting off, you are often going to want to just work on your code literally all the time. You're gonna to wanna to work on it. It's not gonna be working. It's gonna bug you. <laughs> You're not going to want to leave it broken. No one ever wants to leave broken code and you'll have to. You're gonna be in your code, you're gonna be coding, you're gonna be frustrated, and you just, your natural, you, your natural thing is to stay in the frustration, which is very strange, but we do it. We stay in our frustrated code. We don't wanna take a break because no one wants to leave broken code. Because a lot of times when you're coding, you feel like you have all these like things in your mind and things are over here, everywhere in your mind, and you're keeping track of, oh, I changed this one variable here, and then I changed the other variable over here, and then I made it so it could do this. And it's not, it's not good. Um, taking breaks is good. And that's really why we have source control, which if you haven't learned about yet, you will, like GitHub and all of those things. But when you're frustrated at your errors and, you're, and you really wanna make it work, you, you just wanna stay with this code and you shouldn't. You should take a break. You should go out, enjoy the sunshine, because a lot of times when you're taking the break, you figure out how to do the solution subconsciously. And then you don't even have to think about it. You just, you don't think about it. And then it's like, oh, I could do that. Or you're talking with someone, you're discussing something with someone, and then it comes to you. 
and and that's and that's good and that's nice like it's much really I would much rather be at the pool than debugging my code and being frustrated at my computer and wanting to like throw it and stuff you want to take a break from the code everyone needs breaks it's important to come back to the code with fresh eyes and so you can look at it again as basically a new person like because if you've ever looked at code you written you've written like three months ago you it's a different person that wrote that code you don't know and so it's important to come back with fresh eyes, take a break, we all need them, and attack the code again when you're refreshed and ready for it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Katherine, and I hope you learned something new in this video.